How's it going guys? Phantom KV with today's latest community interviews right now and we on the show today we are interviewing the greatest most appreciated probably the most like epic daily artist in the country right now over USA in Pennsylvania. Mike Manley's joining us from Pennsylvania right now, so let's Jordan get it. Bradley, uh, I hope everybody is doing well there in uh, Australia. It is about 10.30 Sunday morning, uh, the uh, 26th here in Philadelphia. So I'm finally getting around to answering a few of the questions that you sent and... Uh, so Manly, can you tell us where, what sort of history have you got behind doing the Phantom Day? Uh, the first one you asked me uh, when I started working on the Phantom, I started uh, almost four years ago, um, right after, literally a few days after uh, Paul Ryan unfortunately passed away. Um, they called me from King, um, King Features, and I ended up taking over right away. Um, that's, uh, unfortunately the same way that I got Judge Parker. The other strip that I do, uh, Edward Barreto had been ill, and, uh, I had to hop right on the same thing. So, um, uh, so I've been doing it close to four years. I think the end of... March started my started me on my fourth year. Good suggestions um, there, but mainly now what what sort of hobbies do you have? Do you like doing obviously you like doing art, but is that your main focus in the community as you speak in in across the overseas right now? And so what sort of other hobbies my do hobbies? You have? My hobbies are pretty much art. Uh, if I'm not uh, drawing the strips. I'm usually, I love to landscape paint. I love to, uh, I have so many other art projects that I would love to work on. So my hobby, my life is pretty much re revolves around doing artwork. Um, now, good suggestions there, Manly, if you want me to call you that. So, can you tell us what sort of, how did you become so prolific in your art profession that you basically nearly know everything about the comic community and how has that transformed into your and it's been that way since i was a, a kid i always drew as a kid and was encouraged by my parents and my grandparents um as a young teenager about 15 i started working in a small commercial art studio in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, and I had a few uh, jobs off and on. I was an art director for a while uh, when I was 21 for a local newspaper. Um, but I always wanted to do comics and I knew I wanted to do comics professionally by the time I was 13. So I basically just kept at it and kept going to conventions and really self-studying. Um, there was not a, an industry of how to get into comics like there is now. And living in Michigan, I was not in one of the hubs of publishing like New York. So it was impossible for me to um, apprentice to anybody. And I didn't live in L.A., maybe the other hub where there was a lot of people in animation who also worked in comics. Um, so I kept practicing and I would go to local conventions, take my samples around talk to other professionals, get feedback, and then eventually in the summer of uh, 1984, I got my first job assisting on a book for DC called Robotech, uh, Robotech Defenders, and uh, then that gave me samples to go to Marvel, and then I started working uh, from that point on, basically almost full-time in comics, although I did do other things like kids' books and activity books and things like that uh, in between assignments. Um, and so I've worked on 
you know, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, Batman both as a comic book and uh, as a storyboard artist, a character designer and background designer on various versions of the character uh, for Warner Brothers. I worked for Warner Brothers Animation for a while, uh, storyboarding on Superman and Batman, uh, storyboarded on Samurai Jack, um, Fairly Odd Parents, um, Venture Brothers. I've done a lot of a lot of storyboarding work. Um, not in the last five or six years as much. Um, hey and then uh, now, can you talk, tell us what sort of covers have you done for few in regarding their many publishers and the publishers all around the world? What sort of covers have you done? For few and other publishers, the the world. covers for Fru, they do reprint stuff. Uh, so I haven't done any a real. I think they reprinted a pinup that I did as a as a cover. Um, so I haven't really done any overseas work, as they call it, for the Phantom. Although I am open to doing that, it would probably be a lot of fun to do comic pages uh, with the Phantom which allows you to do more dynamic things. You're kind of restricted a lot when you do comic books. I mean, comic strips as opposed to comic books because of the format is uh, restricted. Here is, uh, I'll show you this. This is the uh, current week that I am working on, uh, which will be out in May, uh, towards the end of May, um, where the Phantom has fighting a lion, a, long, a wounded lion that he had to track. So you're seeing that now, uh, along with uh, with Devil. So that's like pencils, which will then move along to the inking stage. Sometime later today, one of the things that's changed a lot uh, the last couple of weeks due to the pandemic is that my assistant, uh, who had been helping me in the background, is now not coming over to the studio but it's working remotely. Um, so some of the strips are inked. I still pencil them traditionally, but then some of them are inked digitally where I, she will ink the backgrounds and send them back to me, and then I will ink the figures. Um, and we do that in Clip Studio, Clip Studio Paint. Um, otherwise, uh, things are pretty much normal for a cartoonist, even though with all the social distancing and everything else, because I'm used to working at home, um, the only other distant difference would probably be that I would not be going back to teach. I had to stop teaching in my class, the illustration class that I teach at the, at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art. So, um, I'm not sure if I'll go back this fall either. We're really not sure what's going to happen with schools here in the United States where the colleges will be able to open back up or not. Um, Good suggestions there, mate. So, with your art, do you have any advice for upcoming budding artists who like to draw, who like to do art, like myself? My advice for budding artists is to draw and learn to draw everything. Learn to draw still life, because you're having to deal with compositions and draw different materials. Learn to tell a story. Um, in the Phantom, I never know what I'm going to have to draw. This week I'm drawing lions. Next week I may be drawing the, him having dinner in a palace with the president. The next week he may be riding a camel. The next week he may be flying an old World War II airplane. So I have to draw, be able to draw anything and everything as a comic book artist. And you probably, as a comic book artist, have to draw a much wider variety of things than anybody else. A portrait painter pretty much paints portraits. Um, but an adventure cartoonist, a person who does a strip, or people who do superheroes, generally have to be able to draw everything. And there's usually like the, the, the five, the, the six, seven things that every strip artist has to be good at, which is people, men, women, children. Then you have environments, vehicles, and then the animals. You have to be able to draw domestic animals, like the dogs and cats, and then you have to be able to draw exotic animals like lions. So, 
again, you know, you have to be able to draw everything convincingly, which takes a while to learn and to build your skill set. So I'd also say take life drawing classes. Uh, there's a huge variety and wealth of material, uh, how-to material now, available uh, to any budding cartoonist. There are colleges that you can go to. Like I said, when I was a teenager, there were no classes. The only place I knew there was was the Joe Kubert School. And I think briefly John B. Semarana School in New York City. Uh, but I lived in Michigan, so there was no way I was going to go there. So I'm basically a self-taught artist. I eventually did go back to college and get my degree, my undergrad in painting, and then my master's in painting. But I, that was, I started that when I was 45, so I was well long into my career before that happened. So, And then the other thing is to take advantage of social media. If I, as a young artist, you can contact me or you know, a wide variety of artists. Um, and I think if you're nice and you approach people and you're honest and you can take a criticism, you can take feedback, there's a, there's a lot of things you can do today that will uh, assist you uh, to being able to, to achieve your goals. Um, so that's about it. And I would say good luck. And thanks for asking me. Uh, you can tune in each week, twice a week. Uh, to PencilToPencil.com, which is my uh, a podcast that I do with uh, my two other cartoonist friends, Brett, Brett Blevins and uh, Jamar Nicholas. You can also check us out on our Facebook page, uh, Pencil to Pencil. And uh, you can check me out on Instagram, Draw Manly on Instagram, or on uh, Facebook at uh, Mike Manley. Okay, thanks a lot. So there you have it guys, we just interviewed Mike Manley on the show today and there should be another interview coming out in probably a month or so once I interview, once I like get it all organised and everything and I am wearing my Phantom t-shirt today, I saved it for this special occasion and yeah just if you want to support Phantom Cave, subscribe down below and like, share, comment if you have like any questions you want me to put forward to Mike so he can answer them for you in the comment section below. And as always, keep Phantom Caving and keep safe from this crisis that we are in right now. And...